Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video review, I'm going to give you guys a look at the Kindle Paperwhite ebook reader uh, that just came out. So, this is Amazon's first lighted ebook reader as far as front light and ink go. Uh, so, here's the example of it compared to a regular Kindle without a light. So, this is the $69 Kindle. And so, as you can see, there's a vast uh, difference in the terms of the screen. I mean, they've both got e ink pearl screens, but the uh, Paperwhite's got this uh, light guide that these LED lights built into it, uh, so it's, it illuminates the whole screen um, from top to bottom. Uh, there's four lights down here. Uh, so, as you can see, definitely a big difference, um, even when you turn the light all the way down. Actually, the light, which is really strange, can't be turned completely off. So, when it's all the way off right here, you'd think it's off, but it's not. If you look really closely, you can actually see the lights are still illuminated. Uh, at the bottom down here uh, when it's a dark room. So the light never goes off, which I find kind of strange. Um, so even right here, it's kind of hard to do a direct comparison because the uh, light is always on. And right here, it does uh, look a little different. The newer Kindle, I mean the $69 Kindle, it does have bolder fonts that is readily apparent between the two. Um, but I mean, once you have the light on, it's like a different story entirely as far as the contrast goes since it illuminates the screen more. So I'll do a comparison between the Nook Glow Light and the uh, regular Kindle soon. I just wanted to give a quick look at a comparison between the colors of the light. So as you can see, the color is a lot different. Um, let me go ahead and turn the light back up on the Kindle since it's all the way up on the Nook. Uh, the Nook has more of a, uh, uh, it's just sort of a bluish tinge to it. And the font is a little bit more, um, it's just not as sharp, it's not as uh, dark uh, because it doesn't have the high resolution screen. Uh, so the font is darker and more uh, sharp on the Kindle a little bit here. And you can't see the uh, light as much, so you can sort of see the light coming through more on the Nook. Um, like I said, I'll do a proper comparison between those two. I just sort of wanted to give a look at the different front light technologies. Alright, so let me go ahead and show you guys, I should have done this in the beginning, I guess, what the uh, glow light looks with the uh, light off. So we're in a totally dark room right now. The uh, glow light is turned to full blast, so you probably wouldn't want it at full blast at this point because it's kind of too bright so I usually I kinda of like it around the 10 8 to 10 area when I'm reading at night last night I was doing some reading and I found I kinda of like it in the 8 to 10 range so it's actually quite nice I do really like this light it's not completely perfectly uniform I don't know how well it's gonna show up on the camera but there are kinda of like a little wave of shadows right here because the LEDs are located underneath the uh, frame right there you can kinda of see them if you tilt it um, so there are a little bit of shadows right there, so it's not perfectly uniform. Um, and another thing, I don't know if it's just my specific unit or if I'm like seeing things, but it kind of seems like there's just sort of a slight bluish tinge right in that area. Um, you can't really notice it so much right here. You notice it more when it's at higher brightness. Um, uh, again, I don't know. It just sort of seems just, just like the slight weirdest bluish color tinge right there. It's sort of hard to pick up. It's definitely whiter right here. There's no question about it. Um, so there are uh, some little slight variances as far as the light goes, but I gotta tell you, it's a heck of a lot better than um, a reading light. Just for comparison, here's a reading light on my Sony PRS T1 or T2. So it's got this cover with the built-in light. As you can see, I mean, it's not even close to being anywhere similar. It's like no matter where you position the light, you're never going to get anywhere close to the evenness as you are on the paper white. So I mean, it's a definitely a lot nicer than using reading lights, in my opinion. One thing that's always annoyed with me. With reading lights, is you get the light reflecting off the screen, so it's kind of you got to get it positioned just right. And as you can see, I mean, it's not even uh, remotely similar as far as the which one's easier to read off of. The Kindle definitely gets the major nod in that regard. So the thing with the uh, the uh, shadow area down here that I'm talking about, um, it's sort of uh, a thing where you really only notice it when there's like no ambient lighting. Uh, when you have like a bright light on it like I do right now and you're outside and you, there's a lot of ambient light, you really don't notice the shadowy discolorations at all. It's mostly when it's really dark and you've got the light on that you can actually sort of pick up on those a little bit. Um, like I said, it's not a big deal for me, but I can see it probably bugging some people. Um, but that's just sort of the nature of the LED front light technology at this point in time. Uh, as far as features go, we've got some new features on the Kindle Paperwhite. Uh, they did remove a couple of features, so we no longer have speakers anywhere on the device. It's just really streamlined, uh, very thin. Um, on the back here, it's got this soft coating along the whole back of it. It feels rather nice, and the front's nice and smooth. Uh, so it does feel good in hand. Like I said, it's very basic. It doesn't have any buttons or anything. We've just got a power button down here, a uh, USB port to charge it, and then an LED indicator right there. So yeah, it's really streamlined. It doesn't have the audio like the uh, Kindle Touch from last year did. Amazon went ahead and did away with that. Um, 
So let me go ahead and give you a fe uh, tour of some of the features here. So the new home screen, uh, I'm happy to say it's got uh, uh, book covers, so you can actually view the covers now. Uh, I've been waiting for Amazon to add that for a while, and they finally did. So if you don't like the covers, you can actually get rid of it, though, and just go back to the regular old list view that uh, all the other Kindles have been using for ages. Uh, as you can see, I've got an advertisement down here because this is the ad-supported model. So when you turn the device off, the light goes off completely. That's the only time the light goes off completely. And then as you see, you get the uh, advertisement there. And here's a new thing. you got to swipe to unlock, and then you're good to go back to wherever you left off. If you're in a book, it'll go back to the book and whatnot. So uh, i got some active content loaded on here and some other stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and show you uh, the ebook features. So we've got some new fonts first off. First off, there's no button though. Kindle Touch used to have this button down here to get to the home screen. We don't have that at all anymore. We have to uh, access all your stuff from the menu up here by tapping the top part of the screen and then that brings up all your options. We've got home, back. This isn't just back, it's actually history as well. It'll keep going back to all the things you've done previously. So uh, if you're jumping around a lot, you can use that to go back. And like I showed you earlier, we've got the light adjusting right here. And we've also got the store icon right there and there's a search button. So when you're running searches, if you hit a search, um, it's going to be this book by default right here, but you can go ahead and switch this up if you wanted to search a dictionary or Wikipedia. Uh, so that's how running searches works. Um, X-Ray is a new feature uh, as far as, well I guess not a new feature, it was on the Kindle Touch. Um, but it'll go ahead and list like common themes in the book and you can learn more about specific topics as you can see right here. We get the information, some additional information about it. So uh, as far as the text goes, we've got some different options this time around. Uh, usually you just have the uh, base font and you've got um, a serif font, or a sans serif font, but here we go, we've got a bunch of different options now. I gotta say, I'm not really particularly pleased with many of them. They're pretty spindly as far as like Baskerville and Futura goes. But uh, this one's pretty good. Palantino's pretty nice too. This one's the boldest. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different font sizes. You can go really huge, down to really small. And so this Kindle, it has the higher resolution screen. One thing with the higher resolution screen is the smaller font has, uh, just looks a little bit more detailed. It's a little bit sharper than it is on previous Kindles. Uh, so if you like reading smaller font, that'll be definitely noticeable as far as the increased resolution. So we've got the different line spacing options as usual and the ridiculous margin settings. I don't know how anybody in the right mind would want to read like this. I mean seriously, you want to read like this, this is just ridiculous. Uh, it just always has those same margin settings. It's like ridiculously huge, huge, and normal. I personally would rather have it like uh, an eighth of an inch from the sides instead of a quarter of an inch, but I mean we really don't have any options as far as that goes. So we've got sharing options. You can share via Facebook, Facebook and Twitter. And then we've got all the on-screen stuff. If you want to highlight, you just pull and drag. And the screen has sort of a textured feel to it this time. It's kind of cool. Um, you can add notes and highlights. So if you add notes, it brings up this little on-screen keyboard. And the typing does work good, pretty good, actually, as far as that goes. You just uh, And it also has the preemptive up there, so that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> some of the other stuff we can do here, so then you get the little number tied to it. Um, some other stuff we can do here is... Um, you got the dictionary, of course, and if we pop up the full definition, we can go into the access, the actual dictionary you've got installed. And from here, you can run other searches, and as you can see, it's got hyperlink, so you can jump back and forth. And like I said, that little back button comes in handy, so it'll take us back to where we were reading. Um, one of the other deals, so it's got the, um, the, the, the all the different options right here, uh, so you can check out something on Wikipedia. So it loads a little entry right here, and then you can actually launch the full um, red browser if you hit right here. So as far as the web browser goes, it's not the most functional thing in the world, but it is going to, you know, I mean, get you around here and there. Uh, it doesn't have, like, great scrolling, I've noticed, because you got to scroll like this, and it doesn't like suspend it into a partial refresh state. So the Sony PRS T1 probably has the best um, web browser. It kind of puts stuff in a partial refresh state when you're scrolling, so it's a little bit easier to move around and stuff. Um, this one it just sort of scrolls, and you kind of it's kind of hard to keep your spot, to be honest. Uh, far as the features go, we've got article mode, which is actually pretty cool because it just uh, formats everything into a nice, easily readable 
article like this. So you can enter different URLs up here. Uh, we've got different bookmarks already set up in here. You can add new bookmarks as usual. So let me go back to the book here. Uh, as far as settings, there's not a whole lot of settings as far as the web browser. We don't have any landscape mode or anything. Uh, you got the history and you got the, you can disable JavaScript and images and uh, that's about it. They still label this uh, web browser as experimental and yeah, it's pretty much experimental. Alright, so uh, one of the last features I haven't shown on here is a really cool new one they've added. So if you want to highlight like a word or an entire page, you can actually go in here and have things translated now. So you can choose different la languages. There's a whole list of languages right here. And there we go. We got the translation. So that's cool. Uh, that's a cool feature you're not going to get uh, with um, most e-readers. Okay, so the last thing as far as the settings menu over here, there's not a whole lot, but uh, you got the uh, different options here. You can view the book description and more about the author. We've also got landscape mode for those of you wondering. We don't get to choose which way you want, so it just goes in this direction. Of course, you can add bookmarks by tapping in the corner. You know, one feature that they removed for some annoying reason, uh, with the Kindle Touch, you could swipe um, vertically to skip chapters. For some reason, it doesn't work on this one. There is no way to skip ahead to chapters. Uh, one cool thing that there is, though, uh, there's this new feature. It's called Reading Progress. And what it is is it uh, analyzes your reading speed. And you can set it down here to show you how much time you've got left in the chapter. So it says five minutes left in the chapter. It tells you how much time you've got. And you can also set it for... Uh, how much time you've got left for reading the book. Uh, that's actually the location. It'll show the location of the book down here. Um, so that last option was uh, tells you how much time you've got uh, reading the book. Two hours, 48 minutes. Okay, so when you have uh, personal documents loaded on here, so like this one, it shows personal. So everything's loaded in your device and on the cloud. So if you've got personal documents in the cloud, you can go ahead and download them. and then uh, Or you can just send them to the specific email address that's in the settings up here. Uh, you can access uh, those things in the settings as well as your um, Wi-Fi information, registration. So there's the device options down here. It's got the different languages and you can uh, set in parental controls if you want to restrict access to the web browser, Kindle store, and the uh, cloud. Uh, so if you're having your kids read on this. We've also got some different options down here. You can turn off the public highlights or the popular highlights and annotations back up. Uh, the page refresh. If you don't like the partial page refresh, you can have a page refresh on every page. I haven't really had much of a problem with ghosting, but you will notice it like more with images and stuff. So in that case, page refresh uh, it does come in handy. Okay, as you can see, the personal documents, uh, they get the personal documents tag right there, and then like active content, it says active, and then the PDF, it says PDF. So let me go ahead and show you uh, one detail with this right here. So one of the new features with um, this device is it's supposed to have a uh, Kindle panel view for comics and manga. Uh, I couldn't find any comics and manga that had Kindle uh, panel view activated. So what it does is if you double tap, it will like go in on this specific um, section and then when you swipe it'll just go to the different balloons so it zooms it in. Um, so this one doesn't have that but this uh, has one of the newer features as well where you can uh, specific books have this, not all of them do for images uh, where you can uh, pinch zoom to zoom in and then pan around the page to scroll so not all uh, images have this. Some of them they just zoom in and you don't get the option to uh, pinch scroll so or pinch zoom and go farther so uh, that's sort of a feature that's available on certain titles so I went ahead and used the web browser to download this ebook and it works fine. You can use the web browser to download uh, Mobi, PRC, and text files. And then you can just, uh, they automatically show up on your Kindle home screen as you see right there. Okay everyone, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. Uh, check out ebookreader.com. I'll have a full written review posted after some more extended use. I'm also going to be posting some comparison reviews between this and the $69 Kindle and then like the Glow Light Nook Touch and the Cobalt Glow once it arrives. Uh, so check back for those and thank you for watching.